All right, so MATLAB is here, and I believe before the KinArm camp, everybody should have installed the KinArm analysis scripts on their computers. Uh, these are freely available scripts, so you can install them on as many computers as you want, share them with as many people as you want. And what we recommend you do is that you ensure that, so in my case, I've got them installed in a folder called KinArm analysis scripts. And you want to make sure that that is showing up on your path somewhere. So in MATLAB, if you click set path, um, you make sure that this is on your path. And that way, then you can call any of these functions from wherever it is that you want to be doing your analysis. Duncan went through how to uh, export your data from Dexterity. And earlier, we've gone through using Dexterity Explorer to, to review your data. Um, it's a great tool for making presentations, for looking at what your subject did, just visualizing the behavior. But for your final analysis, when you're creating custom task programs, you're going to have to move to a tool like MATLAB because that way you can analyze it and get the data out that you need. Our goal with these KinArm analysis scripts has primarily been to get the data into MATLAB. There's a few little features that we, we add on top of that, but the biggest and most important thing is simply getting it into MATLAB and ensuring that all the information is there so that you can do whatever analysis you want. So if you want to follow along, please feel free to. You need to get into your, your KimNARM analysis scripts folder. And uh, the first and most important function is called zip load. And if I just type zip load, what it's going to do is look in the folder. It's going to find all zip files, determine if they're actually a true, you know, KinArm data file or not. And if so, then it will load it up. Um, so normally to be useful, you need to actually put it into a variable. Um, and if you're wondering, this is going to be true for all of our functions, you know, how how do I use zip load? How do I use something that you know we've provided here? Well, you use the standard MATLAB approach, which is you type help and then the name of the function, and it will come up and give you some information. I'm not going to go through all of the details, uh, but just one of the ones, for example, is to point out that you can use uh, wildcard characters and file names to say, I only want to load up these particular files. So you can see now it's loading up and it just loaded up the one file. It did not look and load up the second file because it's that second file's name doesn't mass, uh, match what we put in. So there's a few little things that you can do for loading your data in, but, but once you've loaded it in, I just want to show you what actually is in your data file. And so if I were to type data, I can see that ah, there's a number, it's a, it's a structure. And so there's a number of fields. If I had loaded in multiple files, then data itself would be uh, an array. And so I could just use an index to index each of the different files. And the bulk of the data is actually in the C3D. So I can do data1.c3d. And what this actually does, you can see this is another structure. It's a structured array, so it has all these different fields. And it's one by 18. And what that means is for this particular data file, there were actually 18 trials. And so if I wanted to look at just the first trial, I would use an index like that. And now I've got, this is all the data for the first trial. For those of you that uh, are not too familiar with MATLAB, I can also click on the workspace and I can look at my data this way just to sort of play around. So I can click on data and I see these different fields. So if I click on the C3D field, it's going to come up with a 1 by 18 structure. And you can see, ah, OK, so here are the 18 trials. So each row is one uh, trial, and each column is one particular type of data. And I can go along and see that there's all these different types of data. Obviously, things like you know, right hand X and right hand Y are pretty self-explanatory. So there's all this time-based data. But if I scroll across to the right, 
eventually I'm going to get over to some other types of data and we can see things like, you know, events and uh, where's the one I'm looking for? Load table. So for example, I can load up the load table and what this contains is this contains your load table, all the parameters that you used when this data was collected in the load table. So we store everything in the data file to ensure that when you go to analyze your experiment afterwards, all the data is here. So I can show you what it looks like down at the command prompt. You can see you get the same sort of information. Um, and I'm, I'm just showing you at the command prompt because of course this is, this is how you would access it when you write your own MATLAB script. And so one of the things we try to do is ensure that we provide information because these are the different columns in your load table, but you might forget, you know, what is exo wall width actually, what does that actually mean? Well, the descriptions, whoops, um, gives you the descriptions of each of those. So exo wall width in this particular case was the relative width of the virtual wall. So there's lots of information in there. Uh, another one I'll give you an example of is the events which are right here. And so in the events, we have different labels. So I can see ah, which, which events actually occurred. So this is what they show up in your data file. And you can see that, okay, so the first event was a show target event. And I can go back and I can see, okay, what was the time? And that particular event then showed up at 1.896 seconds into this trial. So the sh what I really want you to get out of this is that all of the data that you're going to need to analyze, um, all the information that you need to analyze your data is in here. Um, it's all in these, uh, these different structures. Um, so you'll have to get used to playing with structures and different fields to be able to access the data. There are of course, a few other functions you can see over on the left of the screen and a couple that I'll just point out is that we do provide, for example, a filtering function um, which allows you to take your data and pass a, uh, a filter down. How do you use it? Well, again, this is where the help function is very useful. And you just type help and it goes through and it'll provide you information on how do you actually use this in terms of filtering your data? A couple other ones is, that are useful. So Kinarm add torques will provide an estimate of the intramuscular torques. Uh, so for example, if you're, you're using an exoskeleton and, and I had, as I had mentioned a couple of days ago, when you apply a torque, that's the torque that's actually applied to the robot. And you may be interested in knowing, well, how much torque did my subject actually produce? And of course, the difference has to do with the velocity and acceleration of the robot and the inertia of the robot. And so what this function does is afterwards, it can analyze the data, do the inverse dynamics and calculate, well, what were the forces that the subject must have applied uh, to the robot? Um, so that's another useful function. Um, and another uh, example, another function is the uh, add video latencies. So when you display a target, of course, it doesn't actually appear instantly. Um, there is various delays between when you command a visual stimuli to appear and when it actually appears. Uh, there are a lot of different contributing factors to it and slight differences between different uh, versions of the kinarm, which are related to your different displays that you might have. Uh, lots of information in our user guides on the details there. Um, for most people, doesn't matter a whole lot, but if you are really concerned about it, then this function can, can help you with that. The other thing I'll point out to you is there is a folder called demo. And so I would encourage you to go look in the demo folder and you can run some of these functions. Um, and so these all provide just little examples. So if I were to open up this demo zip load, uh, it goes through and it, it provides a demonstration of actually using 
the zip load function, loading up some data, and then just plotting it. Just some very simple basics, but it's a place to get you started on if you're not entirely sure, well, how do I use these kinds of, of uh, functions? And the last thing that I want to just point out is I'm going to start up Dexterity Explorer um, because all of this information, all these different fields that are in the data, you can also find them in Dexterity Explorer. So if I were to open up a sub uh, task here, and once it's done that, if I click on the parameters tab, you can see that there's all the same sort of information here. So sometimes you may know that you want a piece of information, you're not entirely sure where it might be, and you're like, okay, I'm sure there's something to do with version in here. So in Dexterity Explorer, I can quickly go and find, ah, here's, here's where the information related to version is that I want. And now I know which fields to go look in in MATLAB so that when I'm programming up my analysis, I can find that information there. 